In this video, we are going to be taking a look at 4.2, representing fractions as decimals. And in the next section, 4.3, we will look at representing decimals as fractions, so the other way. So before we get started with this section, I want you to go ahead and define three things. Number one, rational numbers, then terminating decimals, and then repeating decimals. And put those three terms in your notes uh, if you need to read through. Uh, this paragraph right here, go ahead and do that right now to define those three terms. Okay, so first let's take a look at rational numbers. Now, rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed as ratios of integers. Now, that's very important because a ratio is a fraction. So essentially, any number that can be written as a fraction with whole numbers. Integers, remember those are just positive and negative whole numbers. So you have to be, a, it has to be a fraction with positive and negative whole numbers. So negative 1.5 over two, that will not work because this is not an integer. That is a decimal and so that won't work. So it has to be a ratio of integers. And then a terminating decimal is when you have a rational number with a decimal that stops. So this is an example of a terminating decimal. So it stops. It doesn't go on any further. And then a repeating decimal is a decimal that it doesn't stop, but there's a pattern in its decimals to the right or the, the numbers to the right of the decimal point, like right here, this is an example of a repeating decimal. And then lastly, this isn't on here, um, but a non-terminating and non-repeating decimal is if you plug it into your calculator uh, and you notice there is no pattern in these numbers and they don't repeat, they don't stop, Therefore, it is a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. Okay. This is a great example of decimals that don't terminate, don't repeat, but there is a clear pattern. It's just that pattern does not repeat. And so that's what we're looking at today is we are trying to define terminating repeating decimals by studying their patterns. Right here is the big question we're going to try to answer. How can you predict whether a fraction will have a terminating or repeating decimal representation? So we're going to try to re predict those things. So let's take a look at part A. It says use a calculator to write each fraction as a decimal. Tell whether the decimal is terminating or repeating. So the first thing you're going to do is figure out, hey, what is my decimal approximation of all of these by using your calculator? Some of them you won't have to if you remember. Um, otherwise, use your calculator and then find the decimal approximation. And to use your calculator, you would just take the top number divided by the bottom number. Go ahead and do that. Find the decimal approximation and then state whether it's terminating or repeating. When you're doing these in your notes, make sure you rewrite the fraction and then next to that, rewrite the decimal and then next to that, write terminating or repeating. Let's go ahead and check our answers here. So. Go ahead and check your answers on these. Pause the video as you need to. The All of them are terminating except for 0 0.06, 0 0.08 repeating, and 0 0.170 repeating. And so these are the only fractions, 2 thirds, 8 99ths, 170 over 999. Those are the only three that end up repeating. Now, remember, we're looking for patterns. It's all about patterns and identifying what makes a fraction a decimal that repeats or a decimal that terminates. That's the big question we're trying to answer. So go ahead and answer part B, uh, one, two, and three. So read those, try to answer them to the best of your ability, and then come back when you're finished. 
Now, you should have tried this already. If not, please pause the video and try this on your own. But number one, Jose, uh, Jose says he knows that the decimal approximation of a fraction, such as, and we're looking at three-eighths here, will be terminating. So he's saying that that's going to be terminating if he can scale up the denominator to make a power of 10. So remember, powers of 10. That would be 10 to the first, which is 10. 10 to the second, which is 100, 10 to the third, which is 1,000, and so forth. That's what he means by powers of 10. What scale factor would you use, would Jose use, if he needed to use, rewrite 3 eighths as x over 1,000? So that we can set up a proportion. So you would have 3 out of 8 times x over, oh, equals, not times, over a thousand and what you have to do is figure out what do I multiply this by and that ends up being 125 so you multiply by 125 so you're going to take this times 125 as well to figure out what x would be and your new x value is 375 so it's x let me rewrite it like this it's going to be 375 out of a thousand. All right, and so that is our fraction approximation. And once anything is out of a power of 10, in this case, it's out of a thousand, not a hundred, that's fine. We can rewrite that decimal approximation as 0 0.375, 0 0.375 because remember it's out of a thousandths and you would read this as 0.375 thousandths because this five is in the thousandths place. So 375 over a thousand and we know that because it's on the very right that five is in the thousandths place. So that would be our decimal approximation for number one. On number two, May says she can scale up two-thirds to 66 and two-thirds over 100, but the decimal approximation of two-thirds is a repeating decimal. All right, so remember back at the beginning, we defined a rational number as an integer over another integer. Well, listen, 66 and two-thirds, that is not an integer. Because an integer is a positive and negative whole number, and 66 and 2 thirds is not a positive whole number. So this is not a rational number. And as we're going to learn, since we could not change the denominator right here to a multiple of 100 then it's likely not going to be uh, a terminating decimal like the one that we had up here which ended up being 0.375 which is a or 0.315 or no 75 which ended up being a terminating decimal so this is most likely going to be a repeating decimal so yes this is a repeating decimal so number three you should have gone through and tried to figure out which ones terminate and which ones repeat here. So let's, first of all, let's determine which ones repeat and which ones terminate. So this one repeats, the first one repeats, the second one repeats, the third one repeats, and lastly, the fourth one uh, also repeats. Or no, sorry, the fourth one terminates. I even have to terminate there. So the last one is the only one that will terminate, and you can plug them into your calculators, but that's not important. The important thing here is to look for patterns. Again, we're looking for patterns from number three up to um, numbers one through eight in part A. Look at the denominators. What do you notice about the denominators? So if we look at the denominators in this one up here, this has a three a 99, a 999. Well, looking at those, they are all multiples of 3. 
right? So down here we looked, is there any way to get three as a multiple of 10? Which would mean, is there any way that three will go into 100, 1,000, 10,000, uh, 100,000, 1 million, and so forth? And there is no way, three will never go into that, nor will any multiple of three. So let's look down here. Well, that works with this one because six is a multiple of three and 12 is also a multiple of three, but what about seven? Well, seven is another one of those numbers that will go into, uh, I think seven ends up going to 99,999. So what that means is when you will figure this out, it will end up going into 99,999 if I remember correctly and it will go in evenly so that this can be a whole number. But when it's something out of 99,999, that is going to be a repeating decimal. When it's out of a hundred or a thousand or anything that's a multiple of 10, it's going to be terminating. So in this one, 19 out of 20, 20 will go into 100, and that goes into it five times. Since we're able to find the exact whole number representation of our numerator, whatever that ends up being, that's our decimal out of 100. And this is going to be a terminating decimal. All right, so the big gist, if it's if it's a multiple of nine or three or nine or 99, 999, any of those, it's going to be a repeating. If it's a multiple of 10, 100, or a factor of also uh, 10, 100, 1,000, any of those, it's going to be terminating. Make sure you write that down in your own words and your notes and highlight it. Um, and make sure you write it and understand it in a way that you can come back and read it and teach it to someone else. For the decimal, for number th or letter C, find three equivalent fractions. So go ahead and do this on your own. Um, any equivalent fractions will do. Um, go ahead and do part C on your own, and then we'll come back and look at part D. If we look at number one, this is read as three tenths but you can just add zeros to the numerator and denominator that way, like you're multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by 10, or you can take three tenths and multiply by two, right? Because that'll give you six twentieths and keep multiplying by two, 12 fortieths and so forth. Or like this one, over these over here, I multiply by 10 to get to the next one. So times 10 times 10, and that got me to the next one. So any three equivalent fractions would do. And it's the same for number two. If you remember point three repeating, that is the same as one third. So any other um, equivalent fraction to one third, like if you wanted to multiply by two again, then that will give you two over six, multiply by, let's say three, that will give you 6 over 18. So those are three equivalent fractions. So as long as those fractions uh, reduce down to the decimal of 0 0.3 repeating, you're good. Now let's take a look at 3. Now this one was similar to the one we looked at the very beginning where, yes, there was a pattern, but that pattern does not repeat. Right, so this is, it goes one, 13, 133, 1,333, 1, 13,333, and the next one will be 133,333, the next one will be 1,333,333, right? There's that pattern, but that pattern does not repeat. So this one, it is not possible to write as a fraction because it doesn't terminate and it does not repeat. So this is not possible. Okay, and then also in your notes, mention why it's not, because it does not terminate and it does not repeat. That's the reason. 
Okay, go ahead and do part D, and all you're doing is com continuing to go on with this division problem. And so, for example, to continue, you have a five remainder here. So it goes into 50. So seven goes into 50 how many times? And it goes into it seven times. Seven times seven is 49. So you would have one remaining, and then you would continue on from there. You would bring down the zero, continue, until you can decide whether it's terminating, repeating, or neither. And I'll, I'll give you a hint. It's not going to be neither. It's going to be either terminating or repeating. So keep going and see what you get. And if you keep going with this, you notice uh, you get 0 0.285714, 285714. So right here at this point, this is the part that keeps repeating. Right, so here's an additional challenge. Can you write this terminating decimal, or sorry, repeating decimal as a fraction. Try that on your own. I know this is not a question here that they're asking, but I want to know. Try that on your own and then come back to the video to see if we got the same thing. So to write these um, repeating decimals as fractions, what you would do is you would take that repeating part and that's your numerator. So right here, here is the part that repeats, and so I write that in my numerator of my fraction. And then the denominator is all nines. So you notice there are six place values represented here with 285714, and so it's going to be 999,999. So that's as a fraction is going to be what we see right here. And since it's out of, of, of multiples of 9 down there, right, or 9 or 99, 99, 999, you get the idea of all 9s, we know that it's going to uh, repeat. Okay, let's take a look at number 2. The last one here, is it possible for a fraction to have a decimal equivalent that does not repeat and does not terminate? Explain. So go ahead and do that. Explain your answer there, and then come back to the video. All right, so the easy answer for this one is no. Every single fraction has to have a decimal equivalent that does not repeat or does not terminate. Um, or that, sorry, it does repeat and or does terminate, one of the two. It is not possible to have a fraction that does not repeat or not terminate. So that's an easy explanation, and we've looked at several examples throughout this section. And that is all we have for sections 4.2, representing fractions as decimals.